Hi and welcome to a new video. My name is Matthew and in this one we're going to be showing you how you can get started with running tests in Django. And so before I get started, I just want to say that you can find documentation on how to run tests in Django just by going to their website. So just following docs.djangoproject and then going to the latest version, which for the time of this recording is version 2.1. And then you can just navigate to testing and you can read all about how to write tests over here. The main concept of tests falls into two categories. The first one is the unit test. And then something that Django doesn't mention here is an integration test. Now an integration test is a much more complicated test, whereas a unit test could be testing something even as small as just one function. So that's what we're going to be showing over here. And so you can see that in this little snippet here, Django is saying from Django.test import test case, and then it's demonstrating this class here. What we're going to start off with though is a simple test case, not the normal test case that is imported here, but we will get to that in a second. So I'm using Visual Studio Code as my text editor, and if you're using Sublime Text or anything else, that's also fine. So what you'll want to do is just create a virtual environment and your project folder, and once you've got that ready, you are good to go. So what we'll start off with is just by creating our simple app that we'll be demonstrating with. So I'm going to navigate into my source folder, I'm going to run python manage migrate because I've just created this project and then I'm going to say python manage.py and I'm going to say start app and I'm going to call this posts. Now I'll register that app inside our settings so we just scroll down to installed apps and there we go and so now we'll just navigate into our post and I'm going to start off by creating two views here. The first one is going to be for the home page and the second one will be for the about page. So we'll just say define home view and it's going to take a request and then it will re just render that request and so we'll say render that request and we'll just pass in an empty dictionary and we'll actually want to create a templates directory inside our project here so let's do that there and inside the templates directory We'll just create a file called home.html and about.html and then we'll just link that directory inside our project settings by going to the templates directory and we'll say os.path.join the base directory to templates so now we can use that templates directory and then here I'm just going to specify an h1 tag and say this is the home page and then I'll copy actually we need to put that in the home page so let's put that there and we will put this in the about page and just say this is the about page so the home view will render home.html and then the about view will render the about.html and we're going to take those views and just apply them to our URLs. So let's go into the blog URLs and we'll just import them here. So we'll say from posts views import both of those views and we'll create a path to our local host that just goes to the home view and we'll just go to about for the about view. And so now we'll just navigate into our source directory and say python manage.py run server. And now if we check out our local host, we see this is the home page. And if we go to about, we see this is the about page. Now, inside our posts app, you can see we have this tests.py file. And this was created by default when you create an app. And so inside this file is where you want to hold all of the logic for running those tests. So Django will by default when we call the run test command it will look for the tests.py file and then search for any class that inherits from the test case or the simple test case and then run tests that we've defined here. So first I'm going to import the simple test case and I'm going to create a class which we'll just call the homepage tests 
and say it comes from the simple test case. And then inside here, we're going to define our test methods. So for example, let's say we want to test the status code that is in our response when we navigate to the home page. Now, because we are getting a response, meaning it is working when we reload this page, it's actually giving us a status code of 200, which means it's successful. So we want to make sure that that is the status code. So let's call this test home status code. And it's going to be not going to need to take in self. And so we'll say that the response is self.client.get slash. So what this means is that it's the client, meaning Django is going to navigate to this URL and the response is going to be what we get or the, what the client gets when it goes to that URL. So now what we want to do is say self.assert equals. So checking that two things are equal. So we're checking the response status code and 200. So basically saying check that the response status code is 200. And so now we can run this test simply by calling python manage.py test. And if we run that, here you see it says ran one test in 0.017 seconds and says OK, which means that it was successful. So this test was successful. And then it tells us here destroying test database for Elias default. So what that means is that when, when Django runs these tests, it's creating a dummy database that it can work with for those tests. And then once the tests are finished, then it deletes that database. So that's what it means when it says destroying the test database. So let's try another test. Let's test for the actual URL name. So inside our URLs, we can give a name to these parts. So let's give a name to the home URL as home and give a name to the about URL as about. Now here we can test the name in our URL. So we can do that by saying define test home URL name takes in self again and again we would say the response is self.client.get but here we're not getting this URL we're going to use the reverse command and reverse takes in a name of a URL so we'll say from django.shortcuts import reverse and here we'll say reverse of home. So that is the response once we get that call there. And we want to say self.assert equals, so again, checking if it's equal, the response, status code, and 200. So this is different. These two tests are different. The one is testing that if we go to that URL, it works. The other one is testing the reverse call. So checking that the URL that we defined works. So let's run this test again, and there we see it says ran two tests, and it was okay. We can even go further to test for the actual file that was used. So let's say define test correct template, which takes self. Again, we will call that reverse. We'll check that the status was correct. And then we'll also say self.assert template used. And in here, we pass in the response and we pass in the name of the file that we want to test against. So we're testing that if we go to the home page, that the file that was used, the HTML file that is, has a name of home. So home.html was used, check it with the response. We run it and we see we get three and okay. So everything works. So this is a perfect time for you to try and do the same thing for the about page. And it's pretty much the exact same thing, just it needs to be customized for the URLs and the file names. So go ahead and pause this video and try this out and we'll see if you get it right. So here are the next three tests for the about page. So first we check slash about, next we check the reverse call, and then we check reverse the status code and whether the template file was about.html. So if we run this test, we see that we get one that was failed. And so this is the whole point. We see when these tests fail, we know, okay, we did something wrong. So here we can see that if we just scroll a little bit up, we see it says 
fail on the test about status code. And it's telling us here that the assertion error was that a 301 is not equal to 200, which means we're getting a 301 error and that is coming through at line 22. So that is this line here. So it's this test is giving us an error. Now in this case, the reason for that test failing was not because there was an error in our application. We defined the URL, we defined the view, but we actually missed a slash that needed to happen here at the end of the about. So sometimes you actually make mistakes in the tests themselves. So it's important that we make sure that our tests are correct. So there needs to be a slash at the end of this about. And now if we run this test, you can see it says ran six tests and it was okay. But now that we've taken a look at the simple test case, let's move on to Django's test case that was imported by default. So I'm going to close some of those files and I'm going to go into the models of our post app. Now inside here, we're going to create a model and I'm just going to call it a post and we're going to say it comes from Django's model and I'm just going to give it a title, which is going to be a character field and it'll have a maximum length of 100. And then we'll just say define string of self, which returns self.title. Now we'll need to say make migrations and then migrate. And while we're at it, we'll create a super user as well. And so now let's register this model in the admin. So we'll say from dot models import the post and then say admin dot site dot register that post model. And then we'll want to create some views for this as well. So we'll just say define post list view, which is taking in a request. And then we'll just define the view here. So we'll just say define post view and we'll use Django's generic views. So we'll say from Django dot views dot generic import the list view. And we'll use that list view for a class based view. So we'll say this inherits from list view. We'll specify the model as post. And we'll say the template name equals to posts.html. And then we'll just import that model. So we'll say from that models import post. And now we'll need to take that list view into the blog URLs, import that here, and we'll say a path that goes to posts uses the post view dot as view and we'll give it a name which is posts and so lastly we'll just need to create the template which is posts.html and inside here I'm just going to loop through the object list that comes from that class based view and we're just going to create a paragraph here and just say post dot title so this will loop through all of our posts and create a paragraph for each one of them. And so now if we just run the server and just go to slash posts, we'll get nothing that shows because we don't have any posts. So let's go into the admin just to create a post quickly. And so here we'll just add a post that has a title of test. Come back in here and refresh this and we see test is showing there. So it is looping through them. And so now we can actually test this out. So let's close a couple of these files here and let's work inside the tests.py file. And we'll create another class and call this the post tests. So here we're basically going to inherit from Django's default test case. And we want to test the creation of an actual post. So when we do this, we need to call the setup method. And this is a method that the test case model looks for. So here I'm going to say define setup. And this is a class method. So that means we pass in CLS. And at the top, we say it's a class method, just like this. And what this basically does is it's similar to the initiate function or init method. So basically meaning that when this is called, it's going to set up the test. 
and what, what do we want to do? We want to create an actual post. So that's what we do when we set up. So here we'll just say post.objects.create and we pass in the title and say this is a test and we just need to make sure we have that model imported. So we'll say from.models import post and so now we can actually define our tests so let's say define the test text and say that takes in self and we're going to get the only post that exists which is the post that has an ID of one so we'll say post objects dot get and we pass the query set where the ID is one so that's going to get that post model and we'll say that the expected post title equals to post dot title so just like that and then say self dot assert equals so again we're using assert equals and this is basically the premise we're checking whether two things are equal all the time and we'll say the expected post title should be this is a test so this string initially here that we defined when we created it so let's test this out we'll close the server and we'll say python manage supply test we run that we see it says ran seven tests and it says okay so this was a successful test there were no errors it was created the post title was the title we gave it and it did assert it as those two being equal and finally as a last test we will test the actual view that we that we created the post list view so let's say define test post list view it takes in self and we'll say response equals to self.client.get. We're going to call them reverse of posts. So we're checking that the reverse call works as well then. And we're going to say self.assert equals. And here we're going to check the response status code and check that it is 200. And then we'll say self.assert contains and here we're going to basically check that the first post that we created, the one that has a title of this is a test, we'll see if it is there in the list. So we'll say the response. And then lastly, we'll check what template was used. So we'll say assert template used, pass in the response, and say posts.html. And now if we run this test, ran eight tests, okay, so everything worked. And so that really sums up how to use tests in Django. You can see that it really isn't too difficult. And the basic premise is just checking that what we wanted to do was actually what happened. And that normally is done by asserting something. So checking whether what we created was what it actually was meant to be. And so if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a comment down below and let us know if you want to see any other videos regarding Django. And otherwise, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe down below and we will see you in the next one.